Welcome back everyone. I know it's been a little while since my last update video and I apologize for that. It's just that it's, uh, you know, into summertime now and, you know, things get busy, a lot of stuff going on, but that doesn't mean I haven't been working on things. Um, I've got a few projects going on and one in particular is my DIY reflight. I know a lot of yous were asking uh, the status on this. So that's what this video is going to be about. Um, as you can see, I've got it hung up above my now five gallon Pico tank. Uh, this video isn't about the tank. I will <laughs> do a video on that soon. Um, it's going to be about the light. So, um, yeah, that's the <laughs> DIY, um, reflight that I made, uh, basically recycling or, you know, reusing a lot of spare parts. I was able to integrate a... Uh, Max Spec Razor LED module that I had uh, from one of my Max Spec lights uh, that had to be repaired. And I stuck it into this old hard drive enclosure. And I had to build a pulse width modulation circuit um, to drive the LED module. And I was able to reuse the power supply from the hard drive. And what else? Um, I've got the uh, hanging bracket made now. Again, more spare parts. Uh, this bracket was like an old Ikea shelf or from an old shelf that I had up in the attic. Um, the wood, again, same thing. Um, old shelf or something. So I just, you know, made a little L bracket to hang it from. I've got a little clip up here, which I found in my basement. Um, the chains from a previous project. And, you know, the stand goes out and has you know a little foot coming towards us and that was a piece of wood that was left over from my 40 breeder um, build when I built the stand for that so all in all I used you know probably 90 percent uh, reused parts um, I did have to buy some you know components to build my circuit board but I'm pretty uh, impressed and you know happy how it turned out so far did run into a few glitches uh, which I'll you know explain to you and I've got a few things that I want to take a closer look at and, you know, maybe make some modifications if I, you know, come out with, you know, a 2.0 version of this. You know, if I want to do some, uh, you know, more work on this, which I think I'm going to. Um, but for right now, it is serving the purpose and uh, let's take a closer look at it. So this is my little baby black box, which I started calling it. I forget who... Dubbed it that, I think it was Dave's Nano Tanks. Um, so it kind of does look like you know that style of light. Uh, but anyway, it's um, I got two potentiometers up here to control the A channel and the B channel. There's two channels, one's for the whites, one's for the blacks. Um, around the back, there is a power switch. That's where the power comes in. USB is not used for anything. And there is a switch right there to control the fan, which there is a, a cooling fan here. But that's one of the issues uh, that I have. Um, one, the fan is kind of noisy. And two, uh, I believe there's some sort of a short in that. And somehow, you know, when you turn the fan on, um, it's adding an extra three or five volts, I think, to my 12 volt power supply. And it's kind of putting the lights into turbo mode, so which you can <laughs> kind of see if I turn that on, the lights definitely get brighter which I don't, I didn't intend that, so I'm not quite sure why it does that. But I've been keeping the fan off because I don't really need it in this enclosure because my power supply um, is tucked away back here. But it is a 12 volt, 1.5 amp. So it's only, you know, 18 watts uh, power. And this light, I think, you know, was used in a 60 watt fixture or the LEDs. So I'm only giving it a fraction of the power that it would have normally um, gotten. And I've got a pretty big heat sink inside of here. Uh, but anyway, um, and that's one issue I need still need to work out is why uh, it does that. Not the biggest deal because, like I said, I don't really need the fan. Um, and then I'm just going to show you this is the A channel. I can, you know, dim it really dim and increase the brightness. And I've got a B channel which also is controllable you know, with this knob. Uh, but this is another problem that I had, and I think it's because my power supply um, is pretty small. 
compared to what this was originally developed for. Um, so if I turn my white lights, say up to maximum, 100%, see they're on, but as I start turning the blue lights on, they're sucking power away from the whites. And if I get the blues all the way up to 100%, you know, the whites have gone off. So I can't run both channels at 100%. So I need to figure something out with that. But again, it's not really an issue for me because I am running these things at about you know, 25%. It's plenty of light uh, for this little tank. So I just, you know don't really need to worry about that at this point um, aside from that I mean it's it's working pretty good um, what else to say about that I do have the uh, intention you know it's pretty cool that I can manually um, you know increase and decrease the brightness but you know I have this thing on a timer right now you know, just to turn the lights on and off but I really want to have this, um, you know, have like a sunrise, sunset, moonlight, all those features on it. So that is probably my next, uh, or one of the next things I want to do, you know, when I start working on this again. Um, I did buy, I was waiting for these parts and I was working on something else in the meantime, but uh, these have arrived. And this is an MCP 42010, just like it says there. Um, these are basically digital potentiometers. That's you know what's in here. They're 8-bit uh, dual channel. So what that means is one of these chips uh, in here can take the place of both of these uh, potentiometers since it's a dual channel chip. And then what that'll allow me to do is uh, hook my Raspberry Pi up to my light and you know, digitally control um, the brightness of each channel on those chips. So that's uh, what I intend to work on soon for this. So that'll, I think that'll be a pretty cool addition. Um, yeah, let me, I'll, I'll take this down and we can open it up and I'll show you how the guts look. All right, so first of all, um, I cut a square hole in this metal panel to fit my, um, what do you call it, the reflector or lens in here. Uh, so I was able to insert that in, black silicone around there to seal up the gaps and fit in there perfectly. And then just four screws that hold this bottom cover in place. bottom off and you'll see uh, this is my LED pad that I have here and I've got you know the wires connecting into it um, uh, one thing I forgot to mention so the whole reason that I had these pads in the first place and I have two of them was because one of them had gone bad on me and one of the LED chips uh, or LEDs themselves uh, had gone out, and since they're all in series, you know, if one went out, they all went out. Uh, and apparently that was a common problem with the model uh, light that I had, and I think it was you know, because of these type of LED. I don't know what they were, like UV or something like that, or close to it. Uh, but anyway, these were prone to burning out, which is exactly what happened uh, in my original lighting fixture. So I had two of these uh, pads to work with. One of them was missing a B channel. The other one had both channels working. Um, as I was testing this thing in the last week, and <laughs> as luck would have it, the day that I filled the tank up, this little test tank right there, and I hung the light back up and turned it on, my B channel went out. So I guess, you know, it was not far behind the other one uh, when one of these LEDs gave up. And I guess now's a good time to uh, show you how 
I was able to determine that and what I was able to do to fix it. Uh, but you can kind of see it right here. Uh, luckily, these uh, LEDs had some uh, test points on it, and I was able to run a jumper and solder it onto there between those two points. And it basically bypasses these LEDs right there, which were the problem ones, and the rest of them uh, all still work. So a way you can test uh, these pads is um, you just get yourself a 9-volt battery and hook a lead up to the negative and the positive and take care that you know which is which. So the red is my positive. And then you just need to hook them into the corresponding uh, points on your LED module. So red is positive. I'm going to connect that to the A-channel red or positive. Uh, black was negative. I'm going to connect that to the A-channel. And as you can see, the A-channel is lighting up and working just fine. So I know that one's okay. But then if I go over to the B-channel, you can see I'm not getting any light. So my B-channel was dead. And that was because one of those little, uh, either that one or that one, was bad. But like I said, I was able to uh, run a jumper from this little test point to this other test point. And then you can see I get five of the lights, five of the seven lights will come on uh, if I jumper this. And so five is better than none. Um, so I do lose this one and this one, which are the ones that burn out anyway. Um, so that's how I was able to get my B channel back uh, after it had gone out on me by just soldering a jumper between those two little test points. So um, that's pretty much it for this side. Uh, there's just some leads that go up onto my circuit boards uh, to each channel. And this blue thing here is the heat sink itself. And I have this pad attached to the heat sink with some thermal tape. Um, and that's basically um, what I'm using. This is a pretty big heat sink. I don't know if you could see it, but if you saw the last video, uh, you definitely saw how big that thing was. So I'm going to take off the other side and we'll take a look in there. All right, so here we are on the other side. I've already got the screws off. And I'm just going to pop the lid. And as you can see, I've got two potentiometers in here. And I've got these with these quick connects, everything labeled. Um, but each one of these is going to the corresponding uh, pulse width modulation circuit board. So I've got two. I've got one for the A channel and one for the B channel. Um, I'm not going to go into these boards here. You could go watch the last video. I described all of the parts and exactly how I made them. Um, so that's what each one of these boards are. You can kind of see the heat sink down below. Um, I've got 12 volts <coughs> power coming directly off of here. This board here is still the old hard drive controller board um, that it's since everything was already soldered onto there, I just left it there. And, you know, the uh, part that normally would have plugged into the hard drive, which it's all tucked away and I don't want to take it all apart. Um, but the normal hard drive uh, connector, let me get one and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so if you've ever worked on computers, you're probably familiar with uh, this. This is the connector used to power um, hard drives. You would typically plug that into your power supply. And then normally there would be one uh, connector that goes into your hard drive. This one is split into two. That's why I use this uh, because I have two channels. And the 12 volts comes off of the yellow is the positive and the black is the ground. Um, the red and the other black uh, I'm not using. So I just took the red and the black, and, or yellow and black, and yellow and black. And each one of those goes to each one of my pulse width modulation <coughs> circuits uh, to control the A channel and the B channel. Now, maybe this is not the best way to do it, and maybe that's why uh, I was having some issues with the power, or maybe I just have a low, you know, the power supply just isn't strong enough. I need to do some more work in that end. Um, the main part was I wanted to see if I can make these uh, lights dimmable, and I can. So the rest I should be able to figure out as well. But that's you know what I have in here. And I obviously cut the connectors off and just soldered everything together uh, to get them onto my boards. Well, I guess that's about it for this update on the light. I'm not sure what else there is to say about it other than 
Uh, I do plan to continue working on this, make some improvements, and I will definitely uh, post, you know, an update in the future uh, once I do that. And of course, you know, if you have any questions, you know, leave some comments down below. I'll see if I can answer them for you. Um, and if you want to, you know, see more of this, hit that subscribe button, maybe even the notification bell. And, you know, you'll be notified once I post up another video. Um, and yeah, I guess that's about it on the light for now uh yeah kind of give you a little sneak peek of the tank and i'll have an update on this tank soon i am really loving how this is turning out i uh, basically took all the stuff from the 1.5 gallon and got it in here now um, i'm gonna give you another sneak peek of a another project um you can see in the back there you, know, you can read that ph so i've got a ph probe in here which means that I have finally started working on my pH uh, module for my Reef Berry Pie uh, aquarium controller. So a little sneak peek on this. Uh, stay tuned for this. I'll definitely have an update on that. Uh, and I've got that hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. And if I can swing this around. I've got most of the software written. Uh, to record the pH over here and the digital values. Um, still working out, uh, you know, some of the calibration and all that stuff. So, you know, take it for what it is. But so far, I'm pretty impressed with how it's working. And if you guys have any questions uh, about this or if you want to see more of this, l let me know down in the comments. Not quite sure, you know, what people are interested in or not. Um, I think this will be a pretty cool project. So if you guys want to know more about that, uh, let me know. But, um, yeah, I guess that's it for now. I will catch you guys in the next video. And thank you for watching.